Well, the weather outside is frightful, and the fire is so delightful. We've got no place to go. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Hi-ho, and welcome everybody to my channel. My name is Rainer, and this is Rainier Books. It's Christmas, and I wish you all a beautiful Christmas if you are celebrating it. If you don't celebrate Christmas, I hope that you have some holidays, that you have some days off, and that you can enjoy the weather, the climate, wherever you are, and that you are safe with your loved ones. It's the second day of Christmas, it's Boxing Day, as you call it in the United States and even in the United Kingdom. And uh, time for me to wrap up week number 52. Time almost to wrap up the whole year, but I will do that in a later video in a couple of days from now on. Today I just want to tell you what I've read, what I've heard, and what I'm going to read in the next couple. So let's get started. Last week I quick read, is that a word? I quick read a book, yes. I finished the 55th book of the year of 2020 and uh, actually it was the third novel for this year that I read by uh, the American thriller author Michael Connolly and this is The Law of Innocence. I finished that one. I think it was published in November of 2020 by Little Brown and Company, uh, by Orion. Oh, I'm sorry. I got this from the library in Sherholm and all the libraries in Stockholm are closed now because of the COVID-19 crisis. They have closed all the libraries at least until January 2000, of course, 2021, but January 24, 2021. So I managed to get The Law of Innocence and this is a novel about the um, uh, those of you who don't know the work of Michael Connelly, he's one of the world's best, most best-selling thriller authors, and he has created a bunch of characters and uh, writes, I think, at least you can say three series parallel. He has a series of, the, his most famous series of his detective, Hieronymus Bosch, called Harry Bosch, the Los Angeles police detective who's now retired and who's now paired together with uh, Rene Ballard, a police woman uh, working the late show, working at night. And we have um, the second series is uh, the novels, uh, I think there are three now by uh, Connolly, but dealing with uh, Jake McAvoy, a police reporter at the Los Angeles, former Los Angeles Times reporter. And we have uh, the novels uh, that are circling around the uh, Lincoln lawyer, Mickey Haller, who is um, a half-brother to Harry Bosch, which he turned out to be in one of the novels many novels ago. So um, Connolly is always writing good plots and that's why I admire him so much and that's why I almost read every book that he is putting on the market. And uh, this was the third one that I read in 2021 and I also think that it was the weakest one. Um, there's one thing that I um, think I like Mickey Haller novels uh, less than Harry Bosch novels and less than uh, Jake McAvoy novels because I think the character of Mickey Haller of this Lincoln lawyer is the weakest character. He's not so strong as a personality, not so um, delicately shaped, not so... Um, um, vulnerable like Harry Bosch for example is Harry Bosch is a very ambivalent character but a very strong character that you get a very strong idea about and also Jake McAvoy the journalist is um, a character that I think is very authentic but I think that Mickey Haller the, the Lincoln lawyer is the less authentic of the characters and that's I think my problem with this series and maybe also with the newest book The Law of Innocence that was published in November. Here we have a story that is also a little bit cliche-wise returning in every good thriller series that it extends to more than three, four, five books. You have to have a novel, you have to have a movie, you have to have an episode where your main character is accused of being a killer. And 
Now it's uh, the case for Mickey Haller. He is accused of having killed a former client of his, who was found uh, shot to death in his shot to death in his in the trunk of the Lincoln. And um, there's a lot of um, um, talk action. There's a lot of dialogue, as usually in these Mickey Haller novels, in court because it's a court situation. Um, very ambitious, uh, with a very ambitious but stubborn uh, district attorney and the judge and Mickey Holler and all the witnesses and how uh, Mickey is basically uh, tearing apart the wit witnesses of the prosecution and establishing his story so that he uh, will be free in the end. It's an okay novel, but it's not really uh, one of the better novels that Michael Connolly has written. And I think I have said that before, he should not really publish two novels per year. He should focus on one novel per year. And uh, in my taste, he could really put uh, Mickey Haller uh, on the bench and let him wait a couple of years and continue with the story of Bash and Ballard and maybe even with another McAvoy story. So this is uh, over. I finished this, The Law of Innocence, with the 55th book of the year. I still have to do my top 10 of the year. I will do that later. Uh, I started reading another book because the last two books, both Connolly and Ruman Alam, as you, if you have seen the single review that I did, were not so much satisfying for me. So I started uh, picking a book that I thought will give me a lot of pleasure and that I expect it to be a four or a five star read, uh, although I don't give stars. And uh, so I started reading Suvakam uh, Tumavang. So I hope that the name gets somehow right. Suvakam Tamavangsa's uh, collection of short stories, How to Pronounce Knife, published by um, blah, 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 published by Bloomsbury Circus in the United States. And I started reading that. This one, and this is a bunch of short stories about uh, mostly, I think, the ocean immigrants to Canada. And this won the Scotiabank Gala Prize of 2020. And I read the two first stories that are called How to Pronounce Knife and Paris. And I'm really hooked on this book. I loved both of the stories. The first story is about a girl uh, coming home from school and she cannot pronounce the word knife. And I remember that very well from the Scotiabank Gala Prize Award ceremony when Subakam Tomawangsa learned that she won the prize. She said, here I am, an immigrant to this country, and like 30 years ago, somebody, or 25 years ago, uh, a teacher said to me that I was not able to pronounce the word knife, and here I stand, winning the highest literary award of this country. Um, so that seems to be a little autobiographic, the first story. The second story is about a woman uh, working, also of low ocean background, working uh, in a factory where she has to pluck the feathers of dead chickens. A um, very well written story called Paris. I will maybe talk a little bit more about this book and we'll give it a single review when I'm finished. Um, I have to make a little break now. It seems to me that the sunlight uh, out of the window is slowly disappearing. It's, it's a little bit after 3 o'clock now, 3 p.m., 3.15 p.m., 3.20 p.m. maybe on this Boxing Day, the 26th of December. So I'm reading How to Pronounce Knife by Suvankam Tamavongsa right now, and I'm pretty confident and pretty satisfied with this novel to be a Rainier book. Um, since we have Boxing Day today and I have a deal with Karen Evans, I will also start reading um, Burnt Sugar by Avni Doshi. Uh, which many of you have read this year, with many of you have raved about this year. Um, we will start reading this today and we will take uh, the time it takes to read this novel. So this, these two, How to Pronounce Knife and Burn Sugar, might be the last books that I will read uh, in 2020 and hopefully I will finish them. I have already seen... Um, a couple of videos that uh, some of you have done about the best books of 2020, about the worst books of 2020. I won't do a video about the worst books of 2020. I had some disappointments uh, and I have talked about them recently. 
um, but I won't uh, pinpoint, point my finger at the worst books of the year. I think that's not um, very appropriate uh, with respect to the authors. But um, I will definitely do a video about the best books that I've read uh, in 2020. And this will be uh, a mixture really of the 10 best books that I read in 2020, both uh, in fiction and in non-fiction, um, combined in a way. I don't know if I can make it five non-fiction or five fiction or a seven three or whatever. I will also make statistics about uh, the books that I've read this year, 55 so far. I will summarize 2020 a little later. I will also probably give a single review about the first book by Richard Ford that I finished a piece of my heart. And uh, I see you soon, very soon really on this floor. Thank you very much for watching this. Bye-bye.